Hey everybody, what are dolmens? And this is a patron sponsored video. The question asked today is, what do you think the purpose of dolmens are? There are many in the Caucasus Mountains throughout Europe and Japan who built them. How old do you think they are? Was there some terrible weather like global plasma lightning storms or some kind of radiation that the dolmens were used for protection or were they used for storage or something else? Well, that's an interesting question. What are dolmens? Are they just a tomb for the dead or a type of shelter? So, in 1859, a Frenchman with the most curious name, Fiofil Malocoret de la Tour d'Auvin, the antiquary, defined it thus. A structure consisting of one large unhewn stone slab resting on two or more stones placed erect in the earth that such a person may walk under it. Now, that is what they seem to be today, but what were they originally? They were probably formerly chambered tombs. The oldest are from about 5000 BC. Some early ones pop up in 4000 BC in Holland called the Hunabedden, which translates literally as giant's graves, and they are huge, and they point in all different directions. Most of them seem to date, that is most of them worldwide, seem to date from around 4000 to 3000 BC. In 3000 BC, as we know, something seems to have occurred, a catastrophe of some sort, which restarted Egyptian civilization. This is why Egyptian civilization seems to come out of nowhere, because we don't have the history of what happened before. We don't know what happened before. And just when Egypt starts, the dolmens stop, which is very interesting. In fact, we might ask why dolmen structures cease to be built in Europe in this time, yet the very similar mastabas suddenly start to be built in, the, in Egypt in 3000 BC. Isn't that a bit of a coincidence? But back to Europe. Now, the answer to the true purpose of the dolmen seems to be lost in the mists of time. So let's start from the basics. We are looking at something that would have probably been a hill with internal stone chambers. Basically, a very miniature type of pyramid or cave. We can presume that such a tremendous effort would only have been pursued by people who were rich in land or cattle and who were able to afford such a burial, possibly chieftains and their families, dare we say kings. Now, archaeologists tend to play down anything from the Stone Age. They don't talk about kings. They, they talk about farmers or that's about it really, and they play down the grandeur of ancient society, just to be cautious. Now, hills with internal chambers uh, would have to have been obvious targets for later grave robbers, and are very different actually to the shallow circular barrows of the UK and ancient America, which also contain grave goods, and are actually a bit harder to see because they don't stick out of the landscape as much. And we could speculate, well, maybe this is why we find more treasure in the barrows, which are 3000 to 2000 BC or 3000 to 1500 BC, rather than the larger dolmens, which are 4000 to 3000 BC. And we have to ask also, what, what was found in the dolmens by these people? Well, basically a bit of gold, as well as antler bones and some beads, and that's about it really. Now, Dolmen, what is its etymology? It seems to be a compound word, but its constituents are long forgotten. In Welsh, Dolmen simply seems to mean field stone, or actually stone field, that is, stone in a field. So they didn't know. And why would they know? The Britons only claim to have reached Britain in 1000 BC, a land they stole from the giants, according to their own mythology. They fled Anatolia, which was erupting into a terrific conflagration in this time, in the dark centuries following the Trojan War. And when they arrived in about 1000 BC in Britain, it was already two millennia after dolmens had ceased to be constructed. So, no one may have known what they were. Virtually Every dolmen seems to be a chambered tomb or passage, or a ruined version of this. 
The chambered tomb is usually linear, moving from one place to the opposite, rather than being a square room. One might speculate this is for astronomical reasons, but some dolmens, particularly as you get towards Asia, are in fact square, with a passage leading up to them. What is interesting is that many dolmens do seem to be exposed, but this does not seem to be their original form. That is to say, they are entirely excavated, but back in the day, they would have looked more like a cave, even covered in soil. Newgrange is a kind of super dolmen. Several hundred years ago, no one knew what Newgrange was. In fact, its owner, a local landowner, was using it as a quarry to make a little extra cash. It was actually called a cave in those days. People have called into question if the so-called restoration if is, is, is what it was actually supposed to have looked like. The best place I know to look for dolmens seems to be the Caramore Megalithic Cemetery in the remote northwest of Ireland. This spectacular place has some of the oldest dolmens on the planet at about 4000 to 3000 BC for many of them, some even apparently as, as early as 4500 or 5000 BC, and, which is quite shocking. And I stayed for hours and I photographed every dolmen and what was conspicuous was what I didn't see. I didn't see any writing, I didn't see any carvings, there were no swirls or crosses like you see on the dolmens in the east part of Ireland where the Boyne Valley is. No, not at all. These dolmens in the west were blank. Very interesting. That's how old they were. Maybe the idea of putting carvings on stones hadn't yet been invented. And the tombs were so old that no metal was found in them except for gold, because gold is probably very easy to smelt. In other words, the metal age began actually not with copper, but probably with gold. It was gold they were looking for, and they thought, well, let's use this copper for something as well, and they started to do that. The gold found actually greatly resembles Inca jewellery, which can be viewed in the National Museum of Ireland. At Caramore, I was shocked to see a large circular mound, almost pyramid-like, uh, called Listog Hill, and it's dated at around 3500 BC. From the front, it looks like a miniature Teotihuacan pyramid, but it's actually circular and it strongly resembles the mountain behind it. And there's something important about that because this is a repeating pattern. So let's quickly flip to Portugal. Here is the Dolmen da Abodborea, and you notice it's, uh, it's there's like a small hill there. Um, and if this was covered over in the shadow of a flat topped hill in the background that looks like a pyramid in fact it's that theme of as above so below because uh, mounds often look like the mountains behind them and we're getting into that world mountain theme uh, this is what i noticed in reading the new pyramid age by philip copens and he wrote that many pyramids look like the mountain behind them Back to Listergill. I'm interested in this as it's a central dolmen which has has, has had something grand done to it. Listergill is a man-made hill which contains a dolmen. The circular hill is of stones enclosing the dolmen which may have been covered with soil. The structure is 4 metres tall and 34 metres in diameter. So instead of covering it with soil, one could it seems also cover the central dolmen with stones. And these structures could be very large indeed. So why don't we see structures of this size around a central dolmen in the rest of Europe? One reason is superstition. Believe it or not, most of the stones were removed in the early 1800s to be used in building roads. And you won't believe why the work stopped. The work stopped when workers reached the central chambered tomb in the middle. And I presume this is because in Irish discourse, any interference with the buildings of the former people, the little people, would result in a lifetime of bad luck. And they would have realized what they were doing and what they had done when they got to that central chamber and saw it was a, there was a dolmen there. Because they would have believed that the little people could work their magic to make your life a living hell forever. And that is one of the interesting things about Ireland. And for this reason, Ireland has some of the most virgin territory for ancient mysteries exploration that I've seen in Europe. In the rest of Europe, they just dig it up, sell it. So, 
Why were some tombs covered to the extent of Listergill, but others perhaps not? That is, were they all once cairns, like Listergill? Or was Listergill just an earlier dolmen tomb that was simply converted into a large cairn, in the way that, for instance, the much larger Mastaba was, uh, in Egypt, was converted into Zosa's Pyramid? Interesting. Listergill points to a low, saddle-like formation in the Bali Gauli Mountains, 6.5 kilometers to the east-southeast. Sunrise in this position coincides with the start and end of winter. To get to the electromagnetic aspects of the phenomena, yes, there's something funny going on, because some brilliant work was done by Paul Devereux in understanding the placement of dolmens and stone circles. He found back in about 1980, a link between the placement of stone circles or any kind of men heard dolmens too, and the prevalence of the mysterious will-o'-the-wisp phenomena. And he thought, well, hang on a sec, let's plot this geomagnetically. So he plotted standing stones on a geological map and came to a shocking conclusion. They're all placed on fault lines. He then realized that the earth-light phenomena could be being generated geomagnetically, and this was the reason for the placement of men and dolmens. This would have been important to the ancient people, and they may have seen this phenomena as the spirits of their ancestors flying about. Thus the stones are placed at what would seem to be a bridge of the Neverworld. As for dolmens being sheltered due to cosmic events, there would be, seem to be little to no evidence for this, just yet. In conclusion, I would say that dolmens seem to be a recreation of the underworld, of hell, Hades. It even seems, has the same word as hill, Germanic hell. Uh, so you can go to hell or hill without actually needing to go there permanently. Thank you. Thank you.